and I'm live. Can you hit that light for me, babe? So not prepared. Doris, you are not teacher's pet. It's not happening. <laughs> so tonight, I thought we would go over um, how to layer a color palette that you find online. I should ask first, can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay, good. So I had a little mix up with my TLP order today, so I'm going to be giving away, this is Hustle, it's a new color. I'm gonna be giving this away tonight to some lucky student tonight. <laughs> really guys, it's just, you're hanging out with me. You're not students, I'm not a teacher, yada, yada, yada. This is just what I wanna help you guys with. Shelly's not teacher's pet either, Brian. <laughs> so, um, I pulled up a color palette today. You want to open? Let me pull it up here. It's a tricky one. Um, because we'll have these colors. So the closest I'm going to get to this is probably using Moody Blue, Sleeping Beauty, uh, Coral Reef. Mm -hmm. Do I have, I can use Coral Reef with silicone. That'll work. And we could add a little more orange to that to make it more orange. And then the ripple we'll do as white but I'm going to use the Snow White. Hello, Ms. Seriani. Please have a seat. <laughs> if you're in late, go to the back of the classroom, please. So, as far as doing a dirty pour, you should be fine. You can add a gold in between, you can add a silver, and you should be good. But with flip cups, it's totally different because you want to encase certain colors so that they don't produce a muddy effect when you pour it out. So what I'm going to do is do it like a flip cup to show you how I can separate color. So I'm going to set that aside because otherwise I'll be sitting here with it in my hand all night. Let's grab some chance. Hi, Ellie. Ellie's out here and she's actually being quiet. I shouldn't have said anything because I just jinxed it. Hello to everyone coming in. Thank you for joining me tonight. So I might have enough paint there to do two. So we'll do a dirty and we'll do a flip. And then after that, we can go through some opacity testing so that you can learn about opacities if you don't know already, which most of you should know by now since you've been painting. I'm just gonna take these off real quick. Hello, Maria. A funky canvas. So when you get a canvas like this, and I always tell everybody to invest in a stapler. Let me grab it. Kathy Carr has arrived. Hello, Kathy. I can't reach it. Well, it's going to have to stay. <laughs> My stapler's way in the back of my tool drawer and I'd have to pull everything out to get it out. So what I'll do is just mist it a little bit. Oh my goodness, we took all the water bottles away from here. They're all 
They're all triggered for squirting dogs. <laughs> Speaking of dogs. So we are not going with the first Finnegan. Um, he came back and wanted more money. And I called my breeder and or made arrangements to get a meal from her. So we will be getting a puppy in April. 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 So close to the retreat, too. But you're not going to be born until next month, so. But I'll do that update on a Monday Night Live. Uh -huh. Oh, little Miss, little Miss Sassy Pants. I call her Sassy Pants. <laughs> All right. So we have two colors that we know will be fine together. We have another two colors that we know would be fine together. And, of course, this will go with anything. But what I want to do is add a gold so I can show you how to encase this. Evelyn wants to know what kind of puppy. It's a Westie. It's a little Westie. Ellie's future boyfriend. If she's nice to him. I have a bad feeling. <laughs> All right, it's a simple little eight by eight canvas. We don't need very much paint. So we're gonna do a flip cup first. Let me get a cup here. So this has silicone, this has silicone. Let's skip the gold silicone and get the other gold. All right, so with the flip cup, we normally start with a white or a black. Wow, oh, that bottle is dirty. Helen's got to quit touching things. <laughs> and he doesn't wipe the tops off, and then I can't get them open. All right. Got all kinds of things here on my table today. So we have snow coming, so he's not working tomorrow and be working from home. I should be able to get a lot done because she'll be bugging him all day. Okay. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white. So with a flip cup, you don't really want to layer your cup because you want your colors to blend. Not, not to make mud, but to blend together. Another way you can keep from getting mud is to spill in different areas of your cup and not everything in the middle. And I'm using bottles so I can squirt. So I'm putting that turquoise right into the white. Same with the moody blue. Now here's where I'll, where I'll add some gold. Now with the gold, because we're separating the colors, we're gonna layer it on the top. So when I squirt this down, it has to go through the gold first. It will take some of it with it. Brian, and this is for a dirty flip cup? This Correct. is for a flip cup, yep. So I'll start with a little more white. Back to our turquoise, just get it down into the white. And then I'm going to push this coral reef down through. All right. Alan in the bottom drawer. 
of that cabinet is um, cookie racks. Down in the bottom, yep. He's going to grab me a rack real quick. Put it on here instead of push pins. All right, so we're going to take our cup, canvas over, and wait for our paint to drop down. Now I use Snow White and not just plain titanium white. A little crooked there, aren't we? Okay, so when you flip your cup, a lot of people that are new just pick it straight up and let it drip. I don't like that look. I like to like bring it forward and then pull back. Now, if you don't like what it looks like, you can take your cup and just do a little lip through just to open that up. An angel fish. All right, so let's tilt. We had about mm, maybe four and a half, five ounces of paint, so we should be okay. Always bringing that paint back to the middle. Certain colors that have more mica, and white would be one of them tend to sink to the bottom. So colors that are opaque will sink to the bottom. White is not totally opaque. I would say it's more semi-opaque, not semi-transparent, but semi-opaque. Not all though, some whites are very, very dense. But I know the one that I use is not totally opaque. All right, so I'm going to bring this this way a little bit. So we don't want all that moody blue there, just part of it. All right, so I can already see my Snow White setting on top. And that's because it has um, iridescent in it to make it pearl. So let's give it a torch because I did have some silicone. Yes. So I'll let that set up for a minute. Any questions yet about the layering? So everybody understood about when I said to layer the gold, then push your color through so that you wouldn't get mud by these two colors blending together. Get one more torch and then I'll move it and then we'll do Nina has a question. Let's see if I can find it. I didn't see it. Who is it? Nina. I don't see it. There's Nina Davis. Just repost your question that I'll get up. So 
So, Lori, if I was going to swipe this, I would do exactly the same thing. You could do a flip cup and swipe over a flip cup. But when you're laying your colors out to do a swipe, it doesn't matter what order you would do them in, but I still would do that gold between two colors that would make mud. That way it draws the gold over to bring that color over with it. Shannon's got a question. Instead of silicone, what do you think of propylene glycol? I have never used propylene glycol. Nina was asking, can you use propylene glycol? What is propylene glycol? <laughs> Ask Echo. Echo. What is propylene glycol? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, a laxative. <laughs> it acts by drawing water into the intestines. A laxative? The same action as magnesium. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your feedback. I'll have to excuse myself. What is she chewing on? I gave her a bony to keep it quiet. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we don't use laxatives. <laughs> I guess it would be like magnesium, maybe. Is that what they're... That's what you said. Yeah, some yeah. kind of magnesium. All right, so let's do a dirty. Let me take this one up real quick. No, Doris, I am not saying that. Now it's the name. I got to change it again. <laughs> Either that or when I watch Doris, I'm going to have to put earphones on. <laughs> Nate used to do that to me, Doris. Remember, I told you that. <laughs> Nate was the careless whispers. All right, let's not get off track here. <laughs> Can you grab me another rack, sweetie? Thank you. Please and thank you. All right. Thanks. These are actually handy when you're working on something small. Okay, I'm not going to use the same cup. Does that head? It's kind of dirty in the bottom. So. All right, so if you're doing a dirty ribbon pour, you don't have to put your white in first. You can put it anywhere you want. There's no rule as to what goes in the cup first. In your head, you want to tell yourself, whatever goes in first comes out last. So if you're doing a dirty ribbon and you don't want a ton of blue or a ton of the coral color or a ton of the gold, don't put that in first. And if you do want to use that as last, you can put a little bit or you can put a lot. I like to start with a little extra. So when, I do, when I'm doing my dirty pour and that color starts to come out, I know that's the end of my cup and I know when to stop going. She's awfully vicious today. All right, so we'll start with a little bit of the turquoise. I don't have a lot of turquoise left. Ah! Wait, ah, ah. We won't have any of that. No mamma jamma. Good so far. She must have chewed up her bony already, huh? No, and the Snow White. Yeah, she likes to hide things. Then we'll do the moody blue and our gold. So instead of the um, instead of the coral, I'm going to switch to 
the knockoff because I know that doesn't have silicone. Oops. I thought I had a coral out there. And then I'll go to, oops, I'm going to go back to white here and ease these paints up. So we can start fresh. This bottle's pretty gross. She's going to start doing her Jabaka noise. You guys are going to laugh. Okay. I'll use up the Sleeping Beauty. So you see how I'm layering them? You don't have to start at the top of your cup and layer. Just make sure you're shooting for the side. Okay. Two dead soldiers. Go with Moody Blue. And then on here, because the knockoff plays well with a dark color, we can put that there. And we can do some gold. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of moody blue just to start it out on the canvas. So that's all nice and layered. I'm going to swipe this white over. That white might have had some silicone in it, so we might get some effects from that. So as I pour out, they're going to come out just the way that I put them in the cup. So this is why I swirl to get colors that mix in together. It, it also um, gives the eye the illusion that it's creating depth. Okay. I like to shimmy my stuff to get to touch. Tilt. I like to go corner to corner. It's funny because that's how I do my blooms too. This corner looks interesting, so I'm going to try to stop it and pinch. Make sure my sides get covered. Or you could use a corner catcher, and you can make a corner catcher out of a piece of cardboard. You just fold it in half and put it on your corner. That will stop your paint from all flowing off. All right, so let me torch that. What's going on, guys? <laughs> oh, talking about a concert. I thought maybe we were having technical difficulties. I do love the knockoff. It is so pretty. When this dries against that pretty blue, it'll be really purpley. So instead of the purple, um, I did get some blue. So I'm going to play around with the color with the blue to see what we can come up with for a new color. But that was super easy. No mud. Nice color palette that's easy to work with. Still have my gold in the corner and it's mixed through with the, with the knockoff. It's even inside those ribbons. So that'll play well. Let me move this one. 
And then we're going to talk about opacities. Ah! Ellie Kate. A good girl. Mm -hmm. oh. Daddy's putting her in the corner. I highly doubt that. Okay. When you buy new colors of paint, the best thing to do is to swatch them out. If it doesn't say on the bottle or the jar or the tube what the opacity is, you can swatch them out. And I have, I have a baggie of Arteza pearls. Let's play with those for, as a example. I'm hoping that won't be too distracting. I'll grab a piece of paper. All right. And I've done this with all the piggies already. And I do this, I did this as a video for all the Praj Posse paints. So there is a video that shows you the opacities of the Praj Posse paints. So grab a black marker, or someone took mine. Hang on. Oi, oi, oi. She's being so bad. All right. I like to draw a line and let them let that dry before you start swatching. You don't have to use a brush, you can use your finger. So there is a spot on the Arteza. So this says it's opaque because it's colored in all the way. So let's see how honest that really is. Just put a little drop on your finger. Swipe across your black, and it does cover the black line completely. We know that's opaque. Let me grab one that isn't. So let's try, okay. This one's electric blue pearl. Ooh, these are tough. I sip so many things that Judy Eustace had sent me before she passed away. I have a lot of stuff sitting here. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of the blue. Maybe it's too stiff. Okay, so I'm gonna swatch it over that. This one's too dried out. That's not working. Too dry. So it came out opaque because it's too dry. <laughs> Let's peg. My goodness, maybe I won't find any. Okay, let's see what this one is. I don't know why people do that to me while I'm doing this. So you can see, you can still see the black line through this one. This is rose. So if you take the time to swatch out your paints, you'll be able to tell which ones are opaque and which ones are semi-opaque. Semi-transparent would be a lot lighter than that. But you can see how you can still see your black line. So let me go back to an opaque color and show you how it covers the line. So we'll try this royal purple. I'm still using the same finger. 
<laughs> I'm swiping off in between. So that one does cover that black line pretty well. It's just the shadow from the pearl. Let's see if I can do it again. So it does cover it. I just didn't have enough paint on there. So that's the best way to test your paints. Now, if I take my purple raspberry, for instance, from the Praj Posse, I have it sitting here. I already know this is not a peg. There's your black line. So that's the best way to test for opacities. When you are layering your flip cup or your dirty pour, you want to try to keep your colors that are not opaque on top of an opaque color. Only because if you put them all in the bottom on a dirty pour, they're going to get covered up by the opaque. On a flip cup, you do the opposite. You put your transparents on top. And on a dirty pour, you put them on the bottom. Make sense? Um, not necessarily, Linda. It's how much mica is in that color to make it opaque. It doesn't mean that it will sink. All right. So... Let's take another step from here. Do you guys want me to do a quick hues and shades and tints? So this, this is your hue right here. Now, if I wanted to take, um, let's say I wanted to take this royal purple. Mm, let me grab it. Hang on. <laughs> And let's say I wanted to make it a shade. I'd take a little bit of black. I need to cover off. So we'll add a little paint here. I'll take a dab of black. Just a tiny bit. So what we're doing is we're changing the shade. So when you want, when you're talking shades, it's colors that have black mixed. So we have a shade. A hue. Then if I take white, take that same purple, so now we're going to add white. Now we have a tint. Get it? Everybody understand that part? So when people talk about hues and shades and tints, this is what they're talking about. Taking one color and changing it into three different colors.
That's the easiest way that I can teach them. <laughs> it's to show adding black, adding white. So then if you're starting with, let's say you're starting with your three primary colors, your red, yellow, and blue, and you're mixing those together, those will give you your secondary colors. I need my color wheel. I don't know where it's at. And he's in the house. <laughs> so if you take... Red and blue, you make purple. Red and yellow makes orange. Yellow and, and blue make green. So if you take any one of those secondary colors and you add more yellow or blue or green, that's how you get your tertiary colors. But we'll, we'll do that on another lesson because this will get way too confusing without a color wheel for me to show you. And without the paint, we will draw a color wheel. We will paint it out. Yes, Cecilia. I know there's one more. I, sh I should have gotten my gray paint. That's why I said I didn't have any gray paint out here to show that. So if everybody has a color wheel, if you look at the colors, if you look at the secondary colors, let me, let me just write it out here. So you have, I'm going to write upside down, red, yellow, blue. So you mix these two together, you get orange. You mix these two together, you get purple. Mix these two together, you get green. Oh, geez, hard to write upside down. <laughs> if you take orange and yellow, you get an orange yellow. If you take orange and red, you get a red orange or orange red. These are tertiaries. Oops, T this way. These are secondaries. These are tertiaries. Anytime you take that triangle, whoops, my goodness, it's too hard for me to do this. This way I can't see. I meant to go across this way. <laughs> Try that again. Okay. So that's your triangle. If you turn it one turn, that's your secondary. If you turn it another turn, that's your tertiary. There, there's more to it though. And I need to do like a whole class on this. It shouldn't take us more than an hour to do a whole class on a color wheel. When you're doing a dirty pour, like I pour it out on the canvas, Sheena, you want to put your transparent colors in first. Yes. Because when you pour it out, your opaque colors, you can mix them in and here and there, but your opaque colors are going to come out first and set on the bottom. Your transparent colors will set on top. That way you don't lose those transparent colors. I like to mix it up and do like an opaque, a transparent, opaque, transparent. Always put a contrast color in to keep everything you know, everything is away from each other so that you're not blending them and off everything shows up for the party. That's how I always say it shows up for the party. So we will. We'll do a class on the color wheel. But I want to take it a little farther than just the secondary and tertiary colors. I want to bring it all in because there's more than just those. And I want to show you um, what colors not to put next to each other and what colors that you really shouldn't add to a pour, um, especially a dirty pour. You want to be really careful with purple and orange. That is like and purple and yellow. It's like automatically, if those two colors mix, you're going to get mud regardless. It's not so bad with the greens and the blues when you add... 
a yellow because you just get that mucky green color. It's not that brown mud that just, ugh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pick this stuff up. I'm going to write down a number. We're going to give away that piggy. And then we'll be answering some questions. I have a color wheel that needs to be colored. I bought a blank one. I just, I think it's in my mixing room. So I will make sure I get that out for that class. And we will, I'll bring out the paint and we'll paint it. All right, let me grab a number. Yeah, so if you guys can grab a color wheel in the meantime, when I do the class, you'll be able to follow along with me instead of me just showing you. She's going to have to go. <laughs> I have my number. I grab my mouse because Alan's going to have to take her in. She wants to play. She doesn't want to sit out here. Yeah, you might be able to get a blank one off the internet and print it out, and we can all paint them together. That would be fun, because you can ask questions as we're going, too. All right, so this little piggy color is Hustle. One of the brand new colors that just came out this weekend is up for grabs today. If you live in the U.S., I pay the shipping. If you live outside of the U.S., you'll have to pay the shipping. Is everybody ready? All right, number between one and 50. On your mark, get set, go. I have a winner, you can stop. It was quick. So my winner is Deidre with number 12. Congratulations, girl. And I do have your address, so I can ship that right out tomorrow. I'll put it in my mailbox since we're not going to be going out. We have snow coming. Awesome, guys. So is there any? you guys want me to cover before I head out? It was kind of a quick, quick class tonight, wasn't it? Anything, anything to do with layering or flip cup questions or what is interference? Interference is a shifting mica that can go from red to green or blue to gold. It depends what colors are mixed with it. When it gets up against a black, and I here I can show you that actually, because I found my TLP book that I made. All right, so this is what I did with all my TLPs. I did a book for Maria and Shelly for Christmas as well because we all buy TLPs. So you can see, Larry, how I've marked. Thank you, Sheena, I appreciate you. You're awesome. I took the black marker and did the black spots. This interference is called velvet. Let me grab the jar just so I can show you. So when you buy an interference, they're usually white, but they have, and you can see it on this jar, a purple tinge to it. So what I like to do is swatch it out. You can see this one, Larry. 
See how the color shifts over the black? That's an interference. This one here is a gold, it's like a green gold. And then this one here is just so like a white pearlescent powder. Um, the twinkle is a blue violet as well. But they're awesome for, um, you can use the TLP pigments in acrylic pouring. They're very expensive to use in acrylic pouring but you can use them. And actually, uh, Fiona did a video today, Fiona Art, how to mix these for acrylic pouring. Now, we don't have access to the binder that she used. So you can use your glue and water, or you can use just like Liquitex pouring medium mixed with Floetrol. Um, I probably wouldn't try anything else. We could do the, like the glue and flow trawl. So that's one way to mix these for acrylic pouring. And if you're mixing up, let's say you're going to mix up a seven ounce cup. You'd want a big healthy scoop of this. And I'm talking like a big healthy scoop so that you have enough pigment to mix. So, Deidre, coming to you. And did I miss anybody else? Susan, I'm going to be redoing these because they just up, they fixed, they updated the list and they're all in alphabetical order now. Of course, they would do that after I printed them all out. But I'm very thankful for the girl that did those for us. But I like it because uh, here <laughs> already have got it yet. <laughs> so you can check off. And I gave Shelly and Maria these dry erase markers so they can mark off which ones they have. But now I have all the new colors to do. And she had quit here. So I went and cut out the other ones and put them in. But I really like seeing the jars. So I'm going to redo, redo my books. So I got to get my color printer back out. Thank you, Kathy Carr. I appreciate you. You are awesome. She's my stick dealer as well. <laughs> I did send her an email today, by the way. Um, so I, I just bought a cheap little binder from Dollar General and put my little TLP thing in there and stand it in my bookcase here in case I need to see what color I need because when you get these jars you have no clue what colors these mix into so if you have the book and you have them all swatched out after you mix them just swatch it out real quick I laminated mine because I'm a little <laughs> a, little. a little so I can just go through and pick colors out to see what I want to put together So when I redo mine, Susan, I'll be thinking of you. I'll, maybe I'll do an extra set for you. You'll bring it to the retreat. <laughs> I saw Fiona's video. She did use two heaping scoops, but she was also mixing a cup this size up to here. So she was mixing a good five, six ounces. So yeah, you'd probably want two good size scoops. The other video I saw, they used one scoop, but they only mixed um, a Dixie cup full. So um, Larry, it is in PDF, but it's not swatched. I did the swatching. So if you want a, a copy of that, I can send you a copy of that. No, he'd have, that doesn't come like that, Larry. That's, they come empty. It comes blank. This isn't even here. It comes like this. I added. 
little pieces of um, index cards that I swatched on and then I laminated the pages so that they would stay in there. But if it's blank, you could still swatch it out yourself as you buy piggies. The only reason I did those for the girls is because they don't have a lot of piggies and this way they can see what colors they want to order. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope everybody had a good time tonight. If you have any more questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Christine Chart at yahoo.com. And I hope I can answer your questions for you. Thank you for the donations tonight. It's very much appreciated. Well, that's good, Susan. <laughs> so um, next week, if I can get my color wheel together, we may do part of the color wheel. I would rather do it as a whole class, but I do have a schedule that I'm trying to stick to um, with the tutorials because we're starting new people out. So we don't want to get too far ahead, but there's so much we're going to cover right up to blooms, everything. We're going to be covering all that, how to varnish, how to clean a painting, how to do all that stuff. It's all coming. We have 52 weeks this year to play. So <laughs> I have a lot of lessons planned. I just want, you know, in that way, they're in the playlist for you to go back and rewatch if you forget something. So, okay, Susan, it's my syllabus. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching tonight. And um, I will see you all on Monday night. Don't forget Doris goes live on Saturdays at 7. Brian is live on Sundays at 8 o'clock on Eastern Time. And they have a big collab coming up next weekend with all Brian's toys. But we'll give you more information on that next Monday and Thursday. And uh, I hope to see you all at Doris's on Saturday. But thanks for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Bye now.